In the previous video, we learned how to fetch data using the use query hook. We learned about ease loading and data values returned by use query, which can be used to render the components JSX. This is a pretty common pattern when dealing with data fetching. Now, what is also common is handling errors when fetching data. In this video, let's learn how to handle errors when fetching data with React Query. First, I want to quickly demo how we would traditionally handle errors. Let's once again work with the superheroes page. We begin by adding another state variable to keep track of the error. So error, the setter function is called set error and the error message initially is an empty string. We then add a catch block to axios.get where we get the error and we call set error passing in error dot message. We also set loading flag to false. For the JSX, if there is an error, we render the error message. So after the loading JSX, if there is an error, we return an h2 tag that renders the error message. Let's save the file and test this out. Navigate to traditional superheroes and we see the list. Let's go back to the component and change the URL so that the request throws an error. I'm going to add one at the end. If we now take a look at the browser, we see the error message. Request failed with status code 404. Of course, not the most user-friendly error, but this works for us. So our error handling works as expected. Let's now understand how to do the same with React Query. Remember how use query returns a loading flag and the API data? Well, it turns out that use query also returns an ease error flag as well as the error thrown from the request. We can destructure both of them. Now, all we have to do is use these two values to render some JSX. If is error, return an h2 tag, and the only difference now is we return error.message. Let's save the file and see if this works. Navigate to RQ Superheroes, and we see the list. Change the URL to superheroes1 and after a delay we see the error message. We see the loading text for a long time because React Query automatically retries if the API request failed. And we'll talk more about that later on in the series but for now our error handling code works as expected. And if we compare the code, our 15 lines of data fetching still remains three lines, or maybe four based on your formatter. It really is this simple. This is why in the very first video, even for your most basic data fetching requirements, I suggested you give React Query a try. If you're still not convinced, let's keep going and I guarantee you will become a fan. I'll see you in the next video.